Let me um, start by saying, I, you know, depending on who's asking questions, we're either pounding you for how quickly we're going to drive that inflation back to 2% or pounding you on making sure that we don't push the economy into a recession and drive up unemployment. I got to tell you, you know, and it's, uh, these are maybe not the cheap seats, uh, but I actually think you've done a pretty good job in, in terms of both ratcheting up rates and then starting to tail, tail off a little bit. I think we all were concerned by the January numbers where it popped up a little bit more. Um, I wish, Mr. Chairman, we were actually having this hearing two weeks from now because we're going to have a lot more data later in this week and next week. Um, but I want to net-net, um, it's, you know, we've still got ways to go and the January numbers were concerning, but I do think your tailored approach, um, um, we can all second guess, but I think it, it, it has been the right approach. I'm going to commend you on that. I want to get into get two questions in. One, one of the areas that I am very worried about is commercial debt. I mean, we've got a, a Bloomberg story here showing, you know, we're going to hit a $6 trillion wall uh, this year on refinancing. Um, where I'm particularly concerned is the issue around commercial real estate. Um, you know, as we recover from COVID, a lot of things are getting back to normal, but clearly the transformation of where people work is going through a fundamental transition. And uh, I hope people do return more to the office, but lots of folks prefer working, working elsewhere. That's going to fundamentally change the real estate market uh, in, on the commercial side. And I do believe we're going to hit a potentially a cliff here of uh, of, of a totally unexpected problem in terms of commercial real estate. How are you looking at that issue and recognizing there's lots of bumps coming out of COVID? This one seems to be more unique in nature. And, and how are you thinking about that issue? So the first one on, on commercial debt, uh, business debt generally, the, it's, it's kind of been moving sideways as a percent of GDP. So you don't see, you, you don't see a big spike going on or anything like that. Um, uh, however, of course, there are pockets of, uh, of concern, and particularly you, you pointed to, um, see, to uh, uh, the re you know, refinancing spike that has to happen. And I, I've seen those come and go before. Generally, markets can absorb them, maybe a, at a much higher rate this time, but it's something that we we're well aware of and watching carefully. In terms of CRE, I would agree with you. The, the, the uh, occupancy of, um, of office space in many major uh, cities is just remarkably low, and and you you wonder how that can be. Now over time, some of that's going to be made into condominiums and things like that, since we don't we don't seem to have quite enough housing um, in some places. Um, but the question is, what's the financial stability risk? It's it's not great for the largest institutions. Don't tend to have a lot of direct exposure to that. Some smaller banks actually do. Medium and small size banks do. We carefully monitor it. We we agree that that's a, that's a, an area that requires a lot of monitoring, and um, you know I'd say we're on the case. So, well, that will morph me into my last question. Something we've talked about, and a lot of my colleagues have um, talked about uh, with the large institutions. Other, I mean, I I do think uh, even some of the biggest critics um, of Dodd Frank, I think, would acknowledge our banking system is a heck of a lot stronger and in, was able to withstand. Um, uh, COVID in a, in a very healthy way. Um, but what we've also seen evolve is a, a vast amount of uh, financial institutions move beyond the regulatory perimeter. You know, the fact that we now have way over half of the mortgage origination coming from um, non-financing institutions because a lot of the, uh, the large entities, um, hedge funds, other funds that may be doing some of this commercial debt uh, or some of the CRE uh, debt. Um, I'd like you to talk generally in the last 40 seconds or so of you know, how you think about this regulatory perimeter. I, I'm a big believer, and I know some of my colleagues are, that, you know, uh, that we ought to look less at charter and look at same risk, same regulation, maybe as a, as a guiding principle. And you know, we, uh, I know Senator Warren's been working on some work. I've been working on some work around crypto around that, that area. But there's a, a vast amount of activity that's taking place outside the regulatory perimeter. How should we be thinking about that, and how do we make sure that doesn't create the kind of uh, crisis sneak up that happened in 2008 on the non-regulated side of the house? I think you articulated the principle very well. It's same activity, same regulation. And that's, that covers crypto and, and all kinds of other activities. P 
people are going to assume when when they deal with something that looks like a money market fund that it has the same regulation as a money market fund or a bank deposit. And so stable coins need need some attention in that respect. I just think that's that's the basic principle. And you're right. So much of our uh, so much of intermediation has moved away from the regulated banks really for a long period of time. We got to keep an eye on that. We can, can keep looking at. It. I hope it's okay, thank you, thank sir. you, Senator Vance. 